We're going to look at converting between decimal numbers written in a decimal form and to the same number written in a fraction form. So if we take, for example, something like 7, 6 and we want to write it in a fraction form, really all we need is to be very clear on what the um, place value means, right? So we know that in our place value system these are the units and these ones are the tenths and we know what do we mean by tenths? We mean that they're made up of little one-tenth pieces. So really what we've got to do, 7 is a whole number, so we don't need to bother turning that into a fraction. But what about the 6 tenths? Well, let's go to the side and turn that. You've got your 6 tenths, that's what 0, 0,6 stands for. And we always want our fractions to be in simplest form. And remember our golden rule of fractions, to get it into simplified form, whatever we divide the numerator by, we must also divide the denominator by. And we can see quite easily that we can divide both the top and the bottom of this fraction by 2, and we will get 3 fifths. So this bit here of the decimal is the same as 3 fifths. So what we've got is we've got 7 wholes and 3 fifths. So 7, 6 is equal to 7 wholes and 3 fifths. Okay, let's have a look at a slightly funnier one like 0, 0,125. Again, place value, right? We've got no units. We've got one thing that's the tenths, two things that's the hundredth, and this five thing is in the thousandths place. So we know that what we've got there is 125 over a thousand, right? And this we can simplify down. We always look to see if we can simplify. Um, and to simplify, we divide top and bottom of the fraction by the same thing. Uh, and it's probably quite easy for me at least to start with to be able to see that, well, 25 will go into the top and 25 will go into the bottom. So 25 goes into 125 five times, right, because it's um, 25, 50, 75, 100, 125. And then for a 1,000, well, I know there are four 25s in every 100, so they are going to be 40 of them in a 1,000. So that's 5 over 40. Um, and actually, I can see there immediately I can actually simplify that again because I can divide the top by 5 and the bottom also by 5. Top divided by 5 gives me 1. Bottom divided by 5 gives me 8. And so 0, 0,125 is just 1 over 8. Okay, you do quickly now. Turn 5, 25 into a fraction form and make sure your fraction's in simplest form. So pause the video now and try that in your homework book. Okay, so did you do this? You said 5 is your whole. This is tenths, this is hundredths. So what you've got is 25 over 100. And top and bottom of the fraction can be divided by 25. So you'll get 1 over 4. So you've got 0, 025 is the same as 25 over 100, which is the same as a quarter. Okay, imagine that I have been given something like um, two, oh, let me get a pen, 203 over 100. And I'm asked to put that into decimal form. The first thing I always do is just turn it into a mixed number because that's easier. Then I've got the whole numbers separated out and I can just deal with the fraction parts. So how do I turn into a mixed number? Remember I say 100 divided into 203. That goes twice and I'm left with three of the little hundredths left over. Now I have to write that as a decimal. Well, the two is the whole number part, so it comes before the comma. How many tenths do I have? None of them. And how many hundredths? Three of them. There's my answer, simple as anything. Let's give you one to try. What about something like 23 over 20? Pause the video now, try it for yourself, and then we'll go over it. Okay, so hopefully you took my advice and you turned it into a mixed number. So 20 goes into 23 once, and you've got three twentieths left. Now at this point, 
you're stuck, right? Because our decimal number system only tells us what to deal with when we've got tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, etc., etc. So when we've got 20 as a, a denominator, that doesn't help us go to decimal form. But we know how to deal with fractions, and we can easily turn 3 over 20 into a fraction of either, with either 10, 100, or 1,000 as the denominator. We're not going to use 10 as the denominator because we can't get from 20 to 10. You know, we, yeah, simply, but we can use 100, right? Because we know that to get to 100 here, we would just multiply by 5. And so to find the equivalent fraction, we're just going to multiply the top by 5. And so 3 over 20 is exactly the same fraction as 15 over 100. So 1 and 3 twentieths is the same as 1 and 15 over 100. And so we know we've got 1 comma 1 five as our decimal. The last one is one that's harder to see exactly what to do with, but we can do it just as easily. We want to turn 3 eighths into a decimal. So what we really need to do is we need to write it as an equivalent fraction with either what we're going to put in here, 10 or 100 or 1,000, or in fact 10,000 or 100,000 or whatever. So we need to decide which of those are going to go into the denominator. Well, we can't put 10 in because 8 doesn't go into 10, right? We can't put as a whole number. Um, you can't have a whole number 8 going into 100 and getting a whole number answer, so that's not going to work. But in fact, 8 does go into 1,000. Let's just check that. If I divide 8 into 1,000, 8 goes into 10 once, remainder 2. 8 goes into 20 twice, remainder 4. And 8 goes into 40 five times. So in fact, there are 125 eights in 1,000. And so if we multiply the bottom of that fraction by 125, to find the equivalent, we must multiply the top of that fraction by 125, and 3 times 125 is 375. So we know that 3 eighths is exactly the same as 375 over 1,000. And so when we write it as a decimal, it will be 0, 0,375.